So in this question, we're going to try and calculate the MGF, which is the moment generating function of the gamma distribution. Now the MGF is just another way of calculating different things within our distributions. So a bit like PDF and CDF, we also have MGF. Okay, now we're dealing here with the gamma distribution. So first of all, let's write down the PDF of our gamma distribution. So the PDF of the gamma distribution is B to the A over gamma A, and that's using our parameters of the gamma distribution, where A and B are both greater than zero. And then we multiply that by X to the A minus one and E to the minus B X. That's our PDF. Okay, now X is our random variable and in the gamma distribution, X is also greater than zero. There's no negative values in the gamma distribution, otherwise we'd be onto complex numbers. Okay, now the moment generating function, the notation for that is M, capital X, and then a new parameter T. That's how we calculate the, uh, that, that's how we write our moment generating function. And this is equivalent to the expectation of the exponential function tx. Okay, now to calculate the expectation of some sort of input in here, now we've done this on previous videos, for example, we've calculated the expectation of x squared. This, when using integration, we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, put in our x squared inside our integrand, along with our PDF, and then integrate with regards to x. That's how we do that. So here we've got the exponential function with input tx. So instead of having x squared, what we would do is here, so we write this now as e to the tx, we can now have our input into our integral, e to the tx. And then that would integrate out and then we'd have our expectation of e to the tx. So that's the route we're going to take with this integral here. Let's get this off the board and let's put that straight into integration form. Okay, so our moment generating function here. So using what we just wrote down, we now integrate from negative infinity to infinity e to the tx, we can write that in there, so e to the tx, and then just write our PDF, which is b to the a over gamma a, and then x to the a minus 1, e to the minus bx dx. Okay, right, now integrating this. So that looks a bit of an intimidating looking mess there, so we need to do some work on trying to manipulate this a little bit. So what can we do? Well, first of all, our parameters here, we stated that x is always greater than zero. So here our integral from negative infinity to zero of e to the tx and our PDF, which is this, I'm just going to write PDF, with regards to x, this will be zero because there is no random variables from negative infinity to zero anyway. So our parameters we can change. This term here and this term here are both exponential function, so we can combine those terms. X to the a minus one, we're gonna to have to leave as it is, but this one here, there's no x terms in there. So this can come out front as a constant multiple. So let's do that. So now we integrate it from zero to infinity. B to the a, so let's bring this over here. So b to the a over gamma a. So that's our constant multiple for our integral. x to the a minus 1. And then here we've got e to the minus bx, e to the tx. So let's write this in this format. So when we're dealing with uh, gamma distributions and gamma functions, always good to have a minus sign here. So you'll see why this is the case in a, in a moment. So we've got e to the minus. 
So we've got BX and TX. So what I'm going to write is here is factorising minus BX and TX. So now I'm going to write here minus X and then I can plug in there a B and then a minus T. So then that will give me minus XB, which is the same here. And then minus X times minus T will give me positive TX. So that simplifies to that. And then don't forget the DX. OK. Now we want to try and integrate this. Now it almost looks like the gamma integral. So if we do a U sub here on this X to the B minus T, then we might be some way into doing that. So that's going to be our goal. So let's do a U substitution. So let U equal X to the B minus T. So U equals X times B minus T. OK, now usual business with U substitution. Take the derivative. So DU equals, well, with regards to X, this just becomes B minus T. And then DX, get DX on its own. And then DX becomes DU over b minus t. Okay, now one stipulation we're going to put here is we want the b to be greater than t, so we don't have a negative. So b will be greater than t. So we'll see why that is the case when we come to it a little bit later. And then what we now need to do is we've got to use substitution for here for our x, that's fine, that's x to the b minus t, so that could just become e to the minus u. We've got an x here on its own, so we need now a term to replace our x with, because we can't just leave that in there. So to get x on its own, we use this, just divide by b minus t, and then we get x equals u over b minus t. So we can do that as our u substitution for our x. OK, right. Now, what about our parameters? So if x is 0, u stays at 0. And then... If x is infinity, this u here becomes infinity, so long as b is greater than t. Hence why we've got this here. If b is less than, then we'd have negative infinity. So that will then tick the box for our u substitution. So now let's get this all into the variable u. So gamma a, and then 0 to infinity, x to the a minus 1. So now we've got this one here. So now we've got u over b minus t to the a minus 1. Then e to the minus x, b minus t. Well, this part here is just our u, and don't forget our minus sign. So now e to the minus u. Now our dx, we got that as du over b minus t. So I'm going to write 1 over b minus t, and then du. So that is the equivalent of that. OK, now what can we do? Well, we've got a u here to the a minus 1. So we could rewrite that as that. And this b minus t to the a minus 1. And as we've got this one here, I might just separate this up into two terms. So let's, let's do that. So now we've got b to the power of a over gamma a. And then the integral from 0 to infinity. OK, now here we've got, breaking this apart, u to the a minus 1. I can write that as that, u to the a minus 1. That's fully legitimate. But I'm going to take care of this one now. So now I've got b minus t in my denominator to the power of a minus 1. Now what I could do, if I was to take the negative of that, I could just write b minus t to the power of the negative of this. So minus a minus 1. That would just become minus a, and then minus minus 1 would just give me 1. So I could rewrite that with that in a numerator, or just on its own, to the power of this one, and that would take care of all of this. So now I've got b minus t to the 1 a, and then e to the minus u, that would take care of that. So e to the minus u. And then I've got this term here, 1, 1 to the b minus t, which I can just write b minus t to the minus 1. So I'll keep it in this kind of format. So now I've got rid of all my fractions inside the integrand. 
So now I've got B minus T to the minus one and then DU. So these are all equivalent to what we have up here. We have not changed anything so far. Okay, now we're integrating with regards to U. So all of my terms that don't involve U, I can bring them out to the front. So let's take care of that. So there's a U, there's a U. So now I've got this term and I've got this term, which I can now bring out the front here with this multiple. So now I've got B to the A over gamma of A and then B minus T to the one minus A. So I'm just gonna write this like this, B minus T to the one minus A. But I've got here B minus T to the minus one. So basically, if I multiply these two, this one and this one together, my one minus A and minus one, I just add up the exponents. Uh, that will then give me my correct answer when combining them. So one minus A minus one, that's just going to give me minus a. So therefore then this one I can cancel and just write it like this. And then my integral from zero to infinity, u to the a minus one, e to the minus u, du. Okay, right. Let's bring this up to the top and continue integrating with this. Okay, so now this is my integral so far. Now I'm happy with this bit. This here is just my parameters inside uh, making a constant. And here I've got an integral, u to the a minus one, e to the minus u du from zero to infinity. Now this looks like a integral which we cannot integrate, but looking very closely, we've got a famous result here. So for example, if we had from zero to infinity of x to the s minus one, e to the minus x dx, the result of this integral would just be gamma of my s. So that would be gamma s, where s is a parameter. That would then integrate out our x's. Now this one here, we're integrating with regards to u, and we've got a u here and a minus u here, just as the same as we have here. Those all match. We've got the exponential function, that also matches. And we've got a minus one. So this also matches in terms of that. And our parameter is from zero to infinity. So we're in a lot of luck here. This would then reduce down to, in this case it was gamma of s, this one we've got gamma of a. So that's what we can write for all of this. We've just become gamma of a. Okay, let's take this off the board and continue with the rest of our result. Okay, so now we just bring this down and then we've got B to the A gamma of A and then B minus T to the minus A. So these are all multiplied together. Okay, now let's just see what we can do here. I'm sure there's some simplification. Well, we've got gamma A gamma a, so they will cancel out. So now we can now write this as b to the a times b minus t to the minus a. And then we could write this in a couple of ways. So the first way I'm going to write this would be I could keep b to the a here, and here I've got b minus t to the minus a. So this then would give me, if I write it on this side, b to the a and then all that over b minus t. And then what I would do is instead of having my power a there, I would just bring it all out and make this to the power of a. So that would be a legitimate uh, result. Now if I could also write this in terms of minus a, so then what I would do is I would have b minus t, because this is the power of minus a, that would go on my numerator, and then my b would be my negative. So write the b on the bottom and then add that to the power of minus a. So that is the result which I'm going to declare. So take this one off. I'm not going to choose that one. So that would then give me this, which I can then rewrite as my moment generating function, mx of t. 
so that's my parameter. That equals, simplifying this off, splitting the fraction, b divided by b is just 1, and then minus t over b, and then it's to the power of minus a. So that is going to give me my moment generating function for the gamma function. Okay.